You're listening to our podcast, the Slowpoke Travel Podcast. We hope you enjoy our podcast. The podcast starts right now. Slowpoke Travel Podcast with Buck and Camera Girl. Ta-da! Hola. Welcome to Slowpoke Travel. What you doing on your phone? Uh-oh. You hear the church bells? Yes, they're nice. We'll see if, uh... We'll see if the mics pick up the church bells. Oh, I doubt it. I just heard a siren. Yeah, we haven't heard that. That's, is that the first siren that we've heard in San Miguel? It might be the first siren, but I told you I saw an ambulance. Yeah, that's why I assume that it's an ambulance. Because when we see the police and stuff, they don't usually... I mean, do they have sirens on their vehicles? I mean, some I'm of them sure do, like do. the transit vehicles, but some of the police are... Military, so they just look like they're National Guard in a jeep and... with a big guns. But even that, we don't see a lot. Yeah, they I, we see the lights. They usually have their lights on, but yeah, we don't usually hear a siren. Anyway, we're gonna do a podcast here, uh, just sitting at the table with a couple of cups of coffee that Camera Girl made, and this is only our second cup of coffee at home since we've been here. And that's saying something as coffee addicts. Yeah, because I made coffee the first time and it was undrinkable. Mm-hmm. Is that the way? I guess we drank that's it. That's not true. Yeah. It was, it was maybe a little too strong. But going out for coffee is, for us uh, to say that. is one of our rituals. But this is going to be boring, this video. So, of course, I will put um, just video of us walking around town and I'll put some pictures. So there'll be something to list, look at. Why is it going to be boring? Why would you tell me to do a podcast that's going to be boring? We don't have a, Not the podcast. something we want to do. The podcast is going to be very exciting, but I'm talking about the visuals. So I'm going to put different <laughs> visuals. It's not just going to be us gonna sitting be at this very table. Very exciting. Okay. Well, we got a lot to talk about because I we already did a podcast and it didn't work. Because I'm trying to incorporate more of the sounds of Mexico into our podcast. So I had the bright idea of us eating next to a at a roadside cafe (laughs) and man i did all the editing on that thing and it was unlistenable there was just too much traffic noise motocicletas and buses and oh my gosh it was i mean nobody likes to listen to me more than i like to listen to me but it was impossible to listen to that podcast and that was right after we went to the uh, real estate uh, presentation. Presentation. So, yes. you know, we were excited about uh, talking about it, but it didn't work out. So we went to a real estate. I guess it was a presentation about real the real estate market in San Miguel. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was put on by a couple of realtors. So, of course, you know, it definitely wasn't doom and gloom about buying a property in San Miguel. Now, why were we even there to begin with? See, I think... It was our baby, baby step because we are slowpoke with a lot of stuff. Yeah. And we've always said, hey, is there somewhere else that we could live, that we could enjoy? And we found a couple places. We sort of kind of think this was an area that even after three weeks, you and I both agreed, which is not always the case. And so... Um, there was this presentation. We said, what the heck? I so think I think places, it was symbolic. Most places we've been uh, yeah, out of the country, I have really enjoyed and would live there. Wait, wait, I, I wait, wait, Santiago, wait. Santiago in Chile, I wouldn't live there because, I mean, I would live there if I wanted to pay the same as I pay in the United States. That was It was comparable to Seattle in a lot of ways. And San Miguel is yeah, I expensive. Was gonna, yeah, I was going to say, I don't But think... it's also cheap. I mean, it is Mexico, no. but it is expensive in that... It's, it's the most expensive place we've been in Mexico. But we also do a lot more here for less than we would spend in the United States. Like what? Well, it was like I said, you know, before we just did our two-week budget, and I think we had decided that we spent about $700 for two weeks. Now, that doesn't include lodging or anything like exactly. that. Exactly. That's just going out to eat and get coffees and groceries and anything that we want to do. It basically everything other than rent and utilities. It was $700, and we've been doing a lot. We've been going out to eat most to days. Shows. We've gone to some shows. We, mm. we go out for coffee every day, and we just couldn't do that 
in Tampa. You know, like, like I said, if we were in downtown Tampa, we could not do that. If we were going out like we're doing now, we would easily be spending $100 a day just for, I mean, if you just go to a coffee shop and indulge yourself, well, you see, know, it can be $20 with tip. You, you and I, I, I'm not sure this is going to be cheaper in the end. However, one of the things I like, uh, we both agree, walkability. Yeah. Period. Yes. Oh, I'll throw some footage on here of our first, first bus ride. You know, we took a we took an experimental ride on a bus. We just jumped on a bus and went to see where it was going to go. And we'll jump on a few more just to see where they go. That's the best way to learn the bus routes, I think. But, but the bus was um, eight pesos, which is about 50 cents right now. Uh, but, yeah, we did that because, I don't know, it's fun. And we probably will do some bus riding. But and walkability, the- this... We don't have to take the bus anywhere. Oh, yeah, and yeah, you don't have to have a car. And the other thing is, this is another place where the streets are so narrow and the cobblestones and people parked funky ways. The bus driver was superb. He was an excellent driver yeah. and not like Rain Man. He was, well, um, you've got to know what you're doing. If you're driving oh any gosh. vehicle of any size in this town, yeah, you I, have to I be was an expert. Because if you don't know what you're doing, Insurance. You're, you're not going to make <laughs> yeah. it. Because some of these right angles and these narrow streets, mm. I mean, they, they come within a half inch. They really do. Of some of these corners and walls. And it's, it's necessary, but it's, I don't know. I would have a hard time driving in this town. And you are right. We have enjoyed um, Guadalajara, Guanajuato, but and other places. There, it does appear that there are more things to choose from like uh, you go anywhere and you can find some museums and you can find some shows but it does seem like there are just more yeah there opportunities is, there is something for us day. to do every single night here and again that's cheaper like we've gone to uh, a couple of shows and i think last night we went to a show and it was 15 dollars a ticket where can we do that in tampa we could do that in Seattle. When we lived in Seattle, we did. Uh, yeah, you years found ago, some of those. Dimes, there was a lot of great. small, yeah. rinky-dink black box just put on a show type theaters, and we would go there and we would pay five, ten, fifteen, maybe twenty bucks for a yeah. show yeah. for some little, you know, but talented small production. people. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was fantastic. But I don't think we could do that nowadays. I mean, oh, in Seattle, Seattle was changing a lot when we were there, and now that's. What is that? Seven years ago. I mean, so we left Seattle seven I, years you know, ago. It's oh. probably a, a lot of those small uh, spaces have probably transformed into something uh, generic and expensive. But you are right. There's something about the city that does seem to jive with both of us. Which, um, yes, we have both enjoyed going out of the country and seeing different cultures and whatever. But yeah, the walkability, they do have great coffee. Yeah, <laughs> which, yeah we, we find our coffee places wherever <laughs> yes. we go. But anyway, we are enjoying San Miguel de Allende. And yeah, it's been five years since we were here. And since yes, we were things, in Mexico. Since we were in Mexico. Yeah, but this we is our first time here. in San Miguel. But now we've been in San Miguel for a month. We both love it. I mean, we mm-hmm. love most places we go because they're... They're just interesting compared to where we live in the United States. But I really enjoyed our time in Cuenca last year where we were for three yes. months. Yes, yes. And what are the differences uh, that you see now after being here for a month and living in Cuenca for three months? What do you think the differences are between Cuenca and San Miguel? And which one would you choose to live in at this point and why? Well, one thing... and. I, I still um, have some close family ties. Um, getting back and forth to the States, if we were here longer term, um, would be easier from San Miguel de Allende. Um, Cuenca, you, you can take the bus down to the coast and um, catch a plane, or you can, there are some flights, but they're not predictable. Out of Cuenca? Out of Cuenca. Yeah. That's one thing that's an advantage here. The other thing is, as I said, there, 
the number of events. And I mean, it's not like we're the first ones in every museum. I'm not pretending, oh, yes, yes, everything cultural. But sure, we like to see some things. And Buck took us to even um, a concert where there were some young people and they were going to sing opera. And I was like, oh. But you know what? <laughs> Yeah, you gave me a hard time. They were, well, yeah, and you know what? They ended up, one of them did sing a song, Oh, so mia, which is what I was running around, you know, making fun. Um, I said, they're just going to be yelling at us. And you know what? Duh. These people, they were younger. It was, it was different people singing different. Um, I love opera. I love people that can really sing. I yes. Love, I, I love that high level of singing, but I also love the low level. I don't like the middle. I like people that can sing so great that they can sing opera. And then I lo then my next favorite is people can't Dan sing Johnston. at all. Dan Johnston. Yeah, there's uh, Daniel Johnston Daniel and Johnston. Neil Young and Bob Dylan and people oh, that have distinctive voices. Oh, and Bruce voices. Springsteen. Well, wait a minute. Well, yeah, or but I mean, John it's just they're not, you know, Chris Christopherson, they're not great singers, but they're, they're they're great performers and lyricists, and I really love that. Yeah. And then I love each, you know, as much as I, I like character a lot, but then I appreciate opera. Man, I was on a Tom Jones tear the last couple of days listening to Tom Jones on YouTube. Some of his older stuff when he sings, um, You'll Never Walk Alone, like old black and white clips of Tom Jones. She's a lady. <laughs> no, 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 not whoa, that stuff. I'm talking oh, about okay, even okay. before all that. All right, all right, all right. But I love that. But yeah, we saw the opera show here. But here's the other thing, you know, so that was much better. But then in talking with some people, they have some fantastic opera that's been going on for over a decade. I mean, they cultivate. What are you saying? That you're ready to go to the opera again? The bottom line is another reason why I really like San Miguel is the level of events you can go to. So, Almost any night. So, so it's for the Cuenca, ease of getting back, yeah. uh, back and forth. There's San Miguel. And then also just the sheer number of things. And sure, some of it's going to be in Spanish. I have no problem with that. I need to learn more Spanish if I want to be here more. Um, but some of the stuff, oh my, we were going to go see a movie. Some of it is just fun. You just go into, you have no idea where these theaters are. People have set up something and... This, you've got to ask to know yeah, where yeah, these yeah. secret places are. I love that. Yeah, we were going I to go see the holdovers. Oh, right. In uh, English, yeah, yeah. And, you know, there was supposed to be a little theater around here. Or we thought it was going to be a theater. You know, something. It was it said is. like a... Well, we don't know because we didn't actually go inside. I peeked. Was it a theater? I, I think it was just a room with a bunch of chairs, and they were probably... But they were stadium seating, so you didn't have to look over the person know. ahead of you. All, it looked like a can of sardines in there. <laughs> there were a lot of people, and yeah. it was hot outside. We, we were running late, and it looked... We poked our heads in this little place where they were show, showing the whole Once we found it. And it looked like a storage cabinet for old people. No. <laughs> It was jam packed full. <laughs> no. That's a that's that is another plus here in San Miguel, or at least when we do gringo activities. If we go to any gringo activity, we're like on the younger end. We're we're always like there. There might be a few people that are younger than us, but the vast majority of people are a little bit older than us, and I like that because it makes me feel younger because yeah, I am younger. Yeah, but they're here. also in shape. I mean, they're walking on the cobblestone streets yeah. and all that. And you've run into the same people yeah, three times we, that you were taking a Spanish class. Yeah, we with. yeah, we keep bumping into the same people we see Which everywhere. So that's good. It's easier to be social here. But for the for the advantages or disadvantages between Cuenca and San Miguel, you think that uh, San Miguel is easier to get to. Mm -hmm. You think there's more for you to do I here, think there's more. I think there's more levels, and it's more developed. Where, like you're saying, let's put on a show. No, there's some of these places. No, it's been going on for decades, and the people that they bring are just amazing. And then, I mean, there's also the, like, Santana was going to... It wasn't a tribute. It was going to be Santana was going to play. I think it was a tribute. I don't think so. I think so. Anyway, very talented people, which is just always amazing. You feel like, oh, you get to, you know, you get to see something that everybody doesn't get to see or hear on YouTube. Or what about the affordability between San Miguel and Cuenca? Oh, Cuenca was cheaper. I mean, Cuenca I mean, was much cheaper. Hands down. 
now. Yeah, there's no, it's night and day. So if you're on any kind of budget, then Cuenca would be the way to go. Except for, If you needed to like come and said. go. But the thing is, flying into Ecuador, you can fly directly into Guayaquil. Or Quito would be easy to get to. Either one of those two cities. And we if flew into there. Guayaquil. And we were only there for a week. But Ecuador has been having, you know, a lot of problems. I think really since we left, it's been more in the forefront in the last six months, you know, with political unrest and criminal activities and stuff. But it seems really concentrated on the coast and maybe some in Quito. I don't think they've really had any issues in Cuenca because Cuenca is kind of out of the way. Like you say, it's, it is out of the way, so it's harder to get there. So a lot of the the criminal problems that they're having in Ecuador have sort of bypassed Cuenca and they're more in Guayaquil. Uh, well, the coast, I mean, there's the drug coast. routes. And Quito. <laughs> yeah. But we don't, we don't really know what we're talking about there other than huh? what we see on the news. Well, and yeah. But anyway, it, and again, any large city, you're going to have some issues. And um, But you say quiet. that, but it seems to me like um, the issues with crime in Cuenca and the issues with crime here, I mean, I feel safer here than I do in Tampa. <laughs> don't you think that's true? Or I feel like there's, I don't know the statistics on the crime, but I feel, I don't, I don't have any issues walking around anywhere, even at night or in any neighborhoods that we've been into, and we've walked a lot. Uh, we did in Whitequill. In Whitequill, yeah, well, we, yeah, we did not feel comfortable in Whitequill right, at some point it. because everybody kept telling us not to go anywhere. Yeah, again, it just, unfortunately, any, any, um, in any country, there can be neighborhoods, this isn't the time to be here. Oh, sure. But you New are Orleans, right, both in, back um, in the day. both Cuenca and, where are we at? San Miguel. San Miguel, <laughs> You're right. We feel comfortable walking at night, and it's just soothing. Both places have fantastic weather in terms of you don't have well, the humidity. Well, they're pretty different. Uh, well, I like the weather cold. in both places, but Cuenca was very much like Seattle. It was definitely on the more cooler side. They, you know, like uh, when people are putting a positive spin on it, they say it's the city of eternal spring. There mm -hmm. are a few cities that use that little catch line, but... Uh, I think it's more like the city of eternal fall, at least for the three months we were there, which is kind of cloudy and cool, which was nice, but... But it's... neither place has as much humidity as, you know, we yeah. have spent a little bit of time in Florida the last several years, and because we, both places are elevated, you know, the one is, what, yeah. 8,000, this yes. one's 6,500, yes. uh, you don't Cuenca's have the same right humidity. Yes, Cuenca's right around 8,600 feet. And here in San Miguel, it's around 6,600 feet. So there's a big difference in elevation, another 2,000 feet in Cuenca. And it did affect me when we first got there. Oh, yeah. And I got used to it pretty quick, and I didn't have a problem. I don't know how that would work in the long term if we decided we wanted to retire in Cuenca and spend, you know, five or seven or ten years living there, you know, as I'm getting older. I don't know how um, how my body would handle that. I, I've i heard uh, some people say um, in interviews, and I we saw that one lady who had lived in Cuenca for maybe 10 years. And it was an interview with a, someone who had resided in Cuenca. And then at some point, you know, like in her late 70s, she decided to move down to Manta on the Ecuador coast. She really loved living in Cuenca. But the elevation, you know, as she was she getting older, adjusted. she felt yeah. that it was just too much of a toll on her body living at that elevation. She just felt that she had more energy <laughs> when she went down the sea level. So I think that might be something true to for consider. most people as you age and you're not born and raised at that elevation. You know, maybe it, at some point it becomes unsustainable. Well, I think part of it, too, is how you're able to adjust your body. I think, you know, we got some genetics, but I think there are things we can do to help that adjustment too. But Yeah, I think that's true, but but you know, 8600 that's a, that's <laughs> yeah, a pretty extreme elevation. Yeah. Not to poo poo San Miguel, which is 66 yeah. and that is what is that? That's like 1500 feet higher than Denver. 
Exactly. So some and people we're have used a, to sea level. Yeah, Florida. some people have an issue with the elevation in Denver. And right. It's uh, right. quite a little bit higher here. So, but the, but but even so, it's less in San Miguel. I I really like like both places a lot, and I, I really liked the the cultural feel. I I loved the feel of Cuenca. What do you and mean? It when was you say I just love the city. It, it was different. Oh, you Mexico. mean just the vibe? Yes. It you there was definitely. I mean, they're both Latin American countries. You know, Spanish is the language, but it's different. Maybe because no, of the of indigenous population there. Oh, you yeah, know, it yeah, feels yeah. a little different, and it it's feels more. Um, it feels more like another country. Um, still, one of my favorite memories is when we were flying into Guayaquil, you know, and coming over all of that mud and dirty water and farmland as we were flying into the city, which is oh, a yeah. tropical city. Yeah. But, you know, it was much different in Cuenca, but it still had a more of a foreign feel. And I'm sure there are lots of places in Mexico. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I mean, we huh? haven't experienced it. We've been in Puerto Vallarta and uh, Guadalajara, Morelia, Atreek, and now Central Mexico. Um, right. San Miguel, yes. Central mm -hmm. uh, Mexico, kind of upper, at upper elevations except for uh, Puerto Vallarta. And Mexico definitely feels more modern. It feels... I mean, if you want something that's closer to your lifestyle, maybe in Canada or the United States, then Mexico is is a pretty good choice, now more so than Ecuador. I think Ecuador feels a little more We didn't get to Quito. We didn't no. get to, which is a bigger city. I mean, Cuenca, of course, expats and things like that have, you know, helped. Well, the, but well yeah, 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 but, the, but we didn't really feel the influence of expats in Cuenca because we were in the central area. And really, the expat community is kind of off a little bit. They have built out. Yeah. Yeah, so we didn't That's really... That's the same way here. Uh, well, we see, we see gringos everywhere here. We do, but there's... I think, I think the population of gringos in San Miguel is only 10%. But that's, that's a lot, especially since we're in Centro, just in the area that we're at. Maybe, I don't know. Well, I... I I would definitely say the Mexican population, I mean, factually, it far outranks the gringo population here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and we see lots of tourists on the And maybe we just the notice the gringos more. But I don't think so. I think there's just a lot of gringos. But this is a... Mm, but a lot it's of them are a bigger tourists. place. A lot of them aren't here for that long. You know, they're just here for a week or two weeks. And, but then you do have 10% of the population here. About that reside here full time. Yeah, if I had to choose right this second, if you said right now, where do you want to spend five years? Would it be Cuenca or San Miguel de Allende? I would choose here. Yeah, you would. <laughs> and I don't, and, and you're right, I don't want to diss, I mean, there's a million places well, we not, haven't you're seen yet. you not Cuenca. I mean, I or think anywhere, I yeah. would choose, uh, I don't know. It, I, I, it's hard to say because I'm part of me. It's cheap. Yeah, I mean you can you can't beat. I mean the cost of living in Cuenca was incredible for what we got it and was. what we did. It was. I mean it was. I mean especially compared when we went back to the United States, everything seemed yeah. so expensive. Yeah, I heard it from you a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's hard. <laughs> it's hard to go somewhere where your money goes a long way and then go back to the United States and then. You don't get as much for your money, I don't think. I just you know, love this. I just love the environment. I think it's more caring. I was gonna say both places. The pace, the vibe was more relaxed, and you saw lots of families. You'd see people taking their kids back and forth to school, all generations. Um, did get the impression there was more respect for elderly. Oh yeah, you do see more older people out and about, I think. But of yes. course, they're they're more walkable places, so you're just naturally going to see more oh, people. That's true too. That's you know, true living too. in Florida, living in Tampa, living in a lot of places in the United States, you just don't see people out and about because you go from the inside of a building to the inside of a car to the next building, so you're not walking around you know, interacting with the population 
It's true. As people go about their day on foot. But, but there is a more and there is a more relaxed feeling. I do I do like that in most places. You were talking about sheep, but what I thought was funny, um, both in Mexico and Ecuador, you know, I thought we were pretty easy going and cool at the markets. I think in both places the folks would see us coming. Who knows how much we overpaid for, you know, fruits and vegetables. We did whatever. use the markets in Ecuador, though, the public markets, we the big Mercados. And we did use the Mercados a lot when we were in uh, Morelia and when we were in Guadalajara. Yes. And uh, even in Guanajuato. Yes. Uh, but we really haven't used the Mercado here in San Miguel. We're not, we live right now at this house sit not very far from a Mercado and we've gone there one time to buy stuff. Twice. Remember I went again. Oh, you went by yourself <laughs> and bought stuff. But we're not really utilizing the Mercado. We're not finding it to be as uh, great a deal. But there's enough um, fruits and vegetable places. Little, we don't even have to go to the big supermarkets. It's not like that. It's the well, there aren't places. really any big supermarkets no, around here in Centro. I mean, we have to go out to uh, La Comer. You have to go out a little bit outside of Central down here, right where we're at. Better, there aren't any big supermarkets, which is great. Yeah, because this is more like an old town. Although that's Narrow what they were saying. Narrow streets and old buildings. They don't have any brand spanking new supermarkets here in Centro, and that's fantastic. It is fantastic. But the other thing is several people have said now, you know, there's like the Hyatt, the Marriott, the, the bigger the hotels, big hotels are, coming coming on the, yeah. are coming around the edges. And, of course, that's also going to change things. And there is a Starbucks near the major square. Yeah, but all the all these things have probably been here for a long time. They've had big chain hotels here for a mm. while, and they've had Starbucks for a while. San Miguel has been hopping and jumping for a long time. It's been a tourist and uh, expat magnet. It, it so has been it's for... very expensive, but it's only going to get more expensive. But that's true everywhere in the world. Hey, sweetie. You know, I think that every place is experiencing this sort of inflation over the last few years the united states for sure so you know, if you're looking to be on a budget you know and you're going to choose mexico to live in then uh san miguel it's probably not quite would, it. would be on the high end i would think mexico city is supposed to be very expensive but i'm sure but in a big city you're going to find more options there's you know you're going to have a wider scale you know from inexpensive to expensive expensive in a bigger city like in Guadalajara we we lived so cheap in Guadalajara we I mean there were definitely places where we could spend money when we were there but you had a lot more inexpensive options and we're not finding it here in, in San Miguel as much but maybe we will experiment more with some uh, holes in walls and street food and stuff like that because we're not just stumbling upon um, some super cheap places. What's the least expensive place we found that's a sit-down restaurant for us? You know, we can get breakfast and coffees and blah, blah, blah for about 12 bucks. But there's only one place that we've found like that so far. You know, we haven't been in some of these little small mom and pop places. And maybe we'll and, experiment with that more. And also, sometimes we've gone into places that we might could get cheaper, but like I wanted to try the... Cazuela, you know, their, Cazuela. their stews yeah. and, you know, which, yes, I'm willing to pay because they have had all these things simmer. <laughs> That's the first time we've heard that. That's what, who's that? That's probably the gas man or the water man or something. On Sunday? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's you the talk, first You time. talk about having to be more relaxed. In Latin American countries, and you like the relaxed pace. Yeah. And I think that's true. But, and that's definitely one of the pros. You have to be relaxed. It's like we go to places and they're supposed to be open and they're closed. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, people say, you know, you, you want certain things done and it doesn't get done in the timely fashion that you're hoping it's going to get done. He's coming down this road. So we get a. Uh, you keep talking. I'm going to go be nosy. Yeah. This little camera girl's going to go see what that is, and I'll walk in here where maybe it'll be a little quieter because you hear stuff like this all the time. Um, because
because we have a gas truck that comes down the street here to deliver gas uh, to people. We have a water truck that comes down here if you want to buy water. Uh, we have a fellow that comes by and he rings the doorbell and he's just selling uh, tortillas. You're right, it's and, the gas man. And uh, poblanos. And You're right, we have it's the ice gas man. man. Yeah, camera girl saying that's the, the gas man. There's another uh, fellow that comes down here. He's been down the street a couple times. He just walks down the street banging on a drum. Playing, and, a uh, trumpet. playing a trumpet, and then there's two kids running ahead of him that's knocking on the doors. I don't know what he's selling because <laughs> we don't answer the door because whatever it is they're selling, we don't want. But you remember in Ecuador, your Spanish teacher was teaching you the gas song, one of the gas companies' oh, yeah. song. This guy doesn't have a song. He just goes, well, hey, here I am, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, and that's the first time the gas man has made uh, any sound. They come before, and they just... Uh, they just show up and start knocking on people's doors or people know that they're there. I think he's backing up now. Yeah. But he has the tall tanks yeah, but in I the got back up, of his I truck. I got up this morning, and it's Sunday morning. It was like 5.30 in the morning, and um, I went up top to open the terrace for the kitty cat. And I could hear music off in the distance. Somebody oh. was playing. It wasn't, you know, rap or anything. It was... It wasn't gospel. It wasn't. Some... Yeah, I don't know. It was some sort of mellow type music, but it was loud. I mean, I could hear Maybe it. it was I don't from know where church. it was from. It was, it was, you know, quite a few streets away. But I mean, that was five thirty in the morning. And I'm hearing music. Last night we heard, you know, people talking out on the street. Yeah, um, you know, but you I hear like noises that. Everywhere. It's neighborhood noises. I like that. Yeah, there could be a lot of dogs barking. We're actually pretty lucky where we're at. We don't have um, we don't have any super annoying dogs right next door, close enough to uh, kind of irritate oh, us. Oh, I love that the, he's part husky, I don't know what else he is, that's on a roof, and if I go to water the plants on the top terrace and he sees me, he's like a watchdog, so he yeah, sees yeah. me. <laughs> well, they're doing, some, they're doing some kind of construction over there. We haven't really heard too much of it, but I think they have that dog over there. Uh, to protect their assets when they're not around. So he seems like a sweet dog. But it's anyway, yeah, there's some you know, you'll you'll hear that on everything, on every podcast, every video that addresses it. You know, people talk about noise in Latin America, and it is different. And you definitely have to have a different attitude. And I do. I mean, I've always been noise sensitive. My whole that's an life. understatement. Yeah, it's definitely an so it, get, it it could give people hope because you're right. You have gotten a lot more yes, used to it, I mean, and it is it, to me. It's worth the trade off for being in a neighborhood. Well, it's um, yeah, it's. I don't know if it's a trade off. It's just something you have to morph into. You have to accept it. You have to accept that it's a different culture, and the rules for noise. And live in your life irregardless or regardless. Oh, did you say irregardless? Did you just say irregardless? I think they've incorporated that word into the dictionary now. Probably so. But yeah, you, you, I don't think you can tolerate it, or I wouldn't recommend tolerating it, because it's it's going to be potentially unending, especially if you're living uh, in a, a city or a high concentration, you know, a walkable area, basically where there's a lot of people. You yeah. are, you know, it's it's unending. You don't know when the next sound is right around the corner. So you just have to embrace, you know, that fact, you know, and not let it chap your hide every time it happens because... Yeah, you got to somehow you figure down. out a way to turn it into yeah. white noise or you're right. Well, because you can even be that way if somebody's playing a basketball game. Oh, basketball is the worst. I had never met anybody until you that... Basketball games got in your head. I don't understand that. I don't understand. I'm just and that's you. terrible in the United States, especially when oh, we're walking around get neighborhoods get in off, Tampa. Get off that soapbox. Get I don't off. know where it's, people get the balls to put a damn basketball hoop at the end of their driveway. Who in the neighborhood wants that? to listen to a bouncing ball? They're just, it's kids getting out there and, and sometimes with their parents and they're just out there. They're playing a the game and they're exercising, they're moving. Yeah. Well, fortunately, Kids don't go outside anymore in the United okay. States. Kids don't okay. play games. Kids are just on their computers playing their video games. So thank God for that. Well, we'll, we'll wrap it up here and let the gas man finish and 
and I'll see. I'll see if this is any better than the last podcast I did, which I had to ditch. Oh, it was such a great podcast. Oh, my God. Oh, my It was all gold. Lord. But there was just too no, much traffic. we just ramble. Okay. You and I, our ideas of a good podcast are very different. Anyway, the public will let us know. Uh-huh. You'll, they you'll, do. You'll let us know in the comments if uh, okay. there's too much ambient noise or if uh, you're not enjoying this kind of uh, rambly, rambly content. Thing. We'll see how it goes. But, you know, there's going to be uh, hopefully some interesting pictures and whatnot to look at. Okay, that'll be good. So I can go make breakfast now? Yeah, you can go make breakfast and uh, and we'll just carry on with our day. we got to yes. go out and get some coffee out and about somewhere. That's just a nice way for, to get us out. And, oh, again, there's hope. We have not been getting as many pastries. And exercise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not putting milk in my coffee. We're know, exercising more. Yeah. We're not eating the pastries. So no. hopefully Mexico's going to turn into a... Uh, not only a fun experience, but a healthy experience for us. Well, let's not go too far. But no, that does but, but we'll see spread. how it goes. But uh, yeah, if you want to check out uh, more of our videos, we'll have some links down below to playlists and whatnot, especially to house sitting. I've got a house sitting playlist below, and that's what we're doing here right now. In fact, this house sit is about to end. And then it's we'll going to be two and, weeks. It's going to be two weeks, and then we'll go, over, we'll go to an Airbnb for a bit, and then we've got another house sit. Uh, a month from now for a couple of months and you know so it's it's a big chunk of our experience in Mexico is going to be house sitting so house sitting if you if you're a retired person or you're a student or you're if you have a lot of flexibility then I highly recommend looking into house sitting and if you have a pet you know, this trusted house sitters, it just isn't for people that want to house sit. If you have a Too pet funny. and you want to go somewhere, we need to encourage people, you know, with pets and stuff to get in on the, on the house sitting thing so that we can come and house sit <laughs> at their house. Although we probably can't house sit for you because it's not going to work. We get invited to house sits on trusted house sitters and other people, but it never works if somebody invites you. Because the dates are wrong, the location isn't working. It's never going to work. It's it's you have to have a lot of flexibility for it to work. But if you need a house sitter, if you need somebody to watch your pet while you're traveling, go to trusted house sitters, and there's a very good chance that you're going to find somebody, and it's going to work out because there are a lot of people doing it. So, you know, I'm always pushing it as a way to travel. And it is a way to travel if you want a house sit. But if you need a house sitter, I'm not saying this right. <laughs> but I am saying check out Trusted House Sitters. And uh, we got a link down below. And I think it's 20 or 25% off if you use our link. And then we'll get... For the first uh, year. Then we'll get some, uh, I think, a month or two free. Yeah, for whatever reason, we researched several sites... And there's some that are just country specific. So if you want to go to Mexico, there's particular sites. Yeah, and there's, there's a Mexico lot. or something. There's a number. Of, there's several um, for the, Canada and for Mexico. None of them are as easily navigable. That's right. The website. And I don't know why, but the little bit of money you pay as either a homeowner or a house sitter. What do we pay? I think 160. We pay, Maybe it has gone up to that. I think it yeah. was 120 and now it's 160 And I think for a homeowner, I was talking to somebody last night, and I think he was paying 150 would if he would, as a homeowner. I, and I, don't quote me on that. But, yeah, it's, if you get to stay somewhere for multiple nights, that's... Whatever it is, whatever they're charging, it's worth it. Because it's less than 200 for sure, no matter what plan you're on, I think. But the other thing is they try... Um, like we were able to pay, I think it was twenty bucks, and have a background screening. There's just I think, a few things. I think things. they require background screening. Oh, they now. do now. So okay. you have to have a background a check through it. But it's definitely worth it because it's it's the cost of um, a couple of nights in a motel, and we're going to house it at least four months this year, and yes. hopefully we will more. But it's definitely something. To look into so you can check out that link down below and there are drawbacks I'm not going to sugarcoat it because I don't like trusted house bench sitters as much as I used to because now they limit you to only five applications if you're the homeowner and it yeah. cuts you off and you have to look at those so you I have mean, to be a little quicker oh, on the draw and they and they ask the homeowners to put amenities like it's Airbnb which I don't quite understand but on the other hand 
locals give you all these little secrets and nuggets, not every time, yeah. that you wouldn't find out the first time you went somewhere looking at TripAdvisor or Lonely Planet. <laughs> And also, you're in someone's home. Yeah, it's just much nicer. It's just generally more intimate than even, and we do like Airbnb, but people yeah, live but there Airbnb so they have things. It doesn't provide you with everything you need. Like when you're going and to live in somebody's home, you get everything. And you know, there's some responsibility involved. Oh, sure. Because you generally have to take care of pets. You know, house sitting for the most Sometimes part is plants. pet sittings, mm -hmm. but Worms. we've had a couple of house sits without <laughs> pets, but they're almost always pets. And the house sits that we've had without pets have had plants, and it can be a and little bit of work. And one was a humidifier. That was the other reason they needed. Yeah, it. and another one was a crypto thing. We had to oh yeah yeah keep watch the fans moving. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. But you're doing plants and pets here. I mean, we're both doing pets, but you are the plant whisperer, so you have to do the plants. And how much time do you spend on plants a week at this house sit? This house sit is a bit. This house sit, I might spend um, eight hours. Eight hours a, a week. week? You think so? Maybe because it is sort of the dry season, and so you got to get out there and make sure they get a good. And, and some of the plants need to dry in between, so you got to make blah blah blah. Maybe and and I. Um, yeah, maybe, but it might not be quite that much. I don't think it's that much, but I think it's definitely one to two hours a day, three to four days a week. Okay, add that up, son. Math expert. But anyway, but again, and the other thing is, owners don't always know how to quantify that when they say, oh, there's a few plants, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, nothing is perfect, but I have... You know, it's like a type of work in meditation. I have no problem messing with the plants. But yeah, plants, if, when somebody tells you you need to water a couple plants, realize it might take a little more time than yeah. that. It's more than a couple plants here because they have two oh, beautiful yeah. terraces full of plants. And they have indoor stuff. And But their housekeeper does a lot with the indoor ones. So it's sort of, anyway. And they have hummingbirds. So I also get to clean the hummingbird feeders. Yeah. But we get to watch. What was it last night? I think the record five was five. Five hummingbirds, yeah. yeah. That was, that was a lot so of So you're fun. not going to get that at Airbnb. But then, yeah, it's a little, you know, you definitely have some responsibilities if you're house sitting. But I would much rather be at a house sit than at an Airbnb. That doesn't necessarily, isn't well equipped. And, yeah. but Even if we had to pay. it's a better system. Because it... Exactly. That's the other thing I like about this is you're doing something for somebody and they're doing something for you. And yeah. there's something wonderful about that. And you and I aren't afraid of responsibility. So um, this, yeah. Yeah, this we take it very well. seriously. I think that's, oh, yeah. you know, I think that's good. You know, I mean, don't don't be a house sitter if, if you're just looking to get a a free place to stay somewhere. I mean, you do have some responsibilities, so try to figure out exactly what's going to make you happy and find a house sit that you can align your desires and goals with. I mean, if you if you if you want to go to Miami and stay in a beautiful high rise and have a wonderful vacation, you know, maybe house sitting's not for you because if you book a house sit that has everything you want, but it also has two dogs. And you got to take them from the twentieth floor down and to poop yeah, you know, three that, times a day. You or might not five enjoy times that because that's a little bit of a responsibility. Yeah. You know, taking care of two dogs can be taking care of two kids. Like we wouldn't do that. I don't think we would book a house sit, you know, with two dogs in Miami well, because we would want to get out and explore, and you can't do that. If yeah, every three to five dogs. hours you need to do something different. But the other thing is, I think, I like it that there's a profile. And you do sort of get a vibe, because there are certain profiles that I think, ah, oh, no, no. I mean, that's just the first line of decision is, oh, maybe not. And then you have a Zoom. I, we like to have Zoom calls or, you know, because you're not always in the same city. But, yeah, it's just something to explore. And we have a blog on that about, you know, um, here's some things to consider yeah. so you can sort of We've got a whole look house at your neighbor playlist. And, so figure you can out check about, that out. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, it could be cats or dogs that you're taking care of. Or iguanas. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We haven't, I don't think we would book an iguana. I don't know anything about iguanas. But what I do birds? like uh, dog house sits, but I want, a, I want a house that has a yard. 
Chickens. Chickens. We loved when we were house sitting and we took care of some chickens. Oh, and that, that, that lady is so lovely. It North had Carolina. a dog and a cat. And that was one of our favorite house sits. And that was a quite a little bit of responsibility, but it was in a beautiful cabin out in the country. So it was an ideal environment, you know, to take care of those kind of animals and property. Whereas if, it, if, if it's Miami and some high rise, you know, camera girl and I, we're going to want to go out. We're going to want to go to the beach. We're going to want to be out in restaurants. We're going to be out experiencing the city. So we're not going to want to uh, curb our desires by having to take care of two dogs. We would look for a cat, <laughs> you know, in that scenario because cats are great, but cats don't need the kind of attention that dogs need. So you have to make sure and align whatever the house it is with what you want out of the house it because that's going to make you happier. Uh, but you can check out the uh, Trusted House Sitters below. We got a Patreon if you like uh, uh, listening to our stuff and watching our uh, travel videos. We got a cooking channel, so blah, blah, blah. But uh, thanks for uh, taking the time to watch and check that stuff out. And uh, we'll talk to you in the future. Adios. Alrighty, that is it. Click, subscribe, review, share all over the global internet sphere. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next time on the Slowpoke Travel Podcast.